Welcome to the video how-to sessions for Map Extreme. In this session, we're going to find points within a drive time of a location. We'll be using a desktop app and looking at the Map Tools collection and we'll be creating our custom tool. We'll be using the routing service from Invinsa. Uh, we'll take the routing results to come back, the drive time polygon, and passing that to the catalog search method. And we're going to, from that, we're going to create a result set feature collection. And that result set feature collection will hold the results of that and we're going to map that. Uh, results, put points on the screen. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is create a new project and we're going to create a Map Extreme application. That Map Extreme application, we're going to, first thing we're going to do is create a little real estate on the screen so we can see what we're doing. This is a default template that creates a Map Extreme application. What we want to do is, uh, since we'll be using the tools and using events, what we want to do is give ourselves a little real estate so we can see what's happening just to fire off a few events uh, and give us some feedback. To do that, I'm just going to add a uh, rich text box onto the screen, and that'll just be a place where we can output some uh, information that comes from the tool event that we're going to fire off. And I'm just going to change the name of this real quick, just so that it matches up with the uh, existing code that we have. So the current map control has a tool collection associated with it, and that tool collection has a default set of tools. Those default set of tools match up to the buttons up here. Each one of those buttons ends up having a toggles on or off for the map control, which tool you should be using for this left or whatever mouse button you're currently selecting. So we need a way to trigger an event or trigger a way to tell that map control that it's time to use my tool. So we're just going to put a button. When I select this button, it's going to tell the map control what to do. And how we're going to do that is we're just going to look at the map control, the tools collection, and the current uh, left button tool. And we're going to call it something like isochrome. So this is just a name. So the left button tool is a string. And this is the name that it's going to want to match up against. So now what we have to do, obviously, is create an isochrome tool. So we're going to use some of the current map control tool capabilities. And we're going to use a custom tool. And this custom tool is going to be a point tool. Because all we're interested in is clicking on the, on the map and having an event fired. And that event should just tell me where I clicked. So we're going to create a used event handler. We're going to add in a new handler. We're going to call it tool use. We'll create that in a minute for the current tools collection. So whenever a tool gets used, it's going to be firing off this tool used event. We're also going to look at the add. Or now we're going to add a new tool. The new tool is named isochrome. That should match up to the isochrome below. And it's going to be a custom point tool. And that means whenever it picks, that event's going to be fired off. So let's quick go and get the uh, tool used event, because that's kind of useful. and helps tells us what's going on and how things actually work. So this event handler accepts a tool used event arg. So we're going to use that later on to output some results to our text box. And of course, once we get the logic in place, we're going to use that to actually do the work of creating our isochrone and doing our search. But let's just take a, see, let's take a look at what happens right now. So we're going to run our application. Pretty straightforward little applique. I'm going to push my button. So I just told the map control, time to use the isochrome tool. So when I pick on a map, you'll see that two events were fired. One was start, and one was end. Since I clicked relatively cl quickly, they both happen at the same point. I can start here, drag across the screen, and release. And you'll see that the two coordinates are, are opposite. So now we have our tool that when the start happens, I want it to go do a search on that point. So let's go back in and start filling in some code. So I'm going to uncomment this code now. So when the tool name comes through, and the tool's name is equal to isochrome, and the map's tool status is equal to start, remember we want that first click, I'm going to create my select points method. And the select point method accepts a point argument. And that point argument is going to be literally just where I clicked on the map. And that's going to be associated with the current display coordinate system and the map coordinates that were actually picked on the screen. So the next thing we need, obviously, is our select points method. Our select point method is going to be the work that we do in order to make a connection to Invinsa, get some results, package up a request, and process those results. So this is pretty straightforward. Here's our select point method. This is the from point. This is where I clicked on the screen. Obviously, we need a, a URL somewhere to an Invinsa instance. We're going to create a route client. It's the interface. And from that, we're going to look into the Map Info Routing Route Client Factory, and we're going to tell it to give us one of the um, routing clients that it knows about. Currently, it knows about Invinsa and Routing J Server, but we're going to look at an Invinsa service instance at this point. 
You'll see here too that it doesn't quite know about these by default. The template application that we're looking at doesn't have a reference to the assembly, the Map Info Services assembly. So I'm just going to quickly add that. And you'll see once I've added this that the now IntelliSense and everybody routing client factory knows about that. So we can get some IntelliSense. But it also is helpful that once we build it, it's not going to know about it either. Next thing we need to do is just create an isochrone request. We're, t we're talking about time here, so we need an isochrone. Once I have that request, I need to create a definition. That definition is where I'm going to define the from point, where I physically clicked, and then the units that are associated with the costs that are coming next. So I want minutes. So it's going to calculate in cost uh, the number of minutes specified below. So the first one I'm going to create is an ISO cost. I want to be associated with 10 minutes, so I want to know a 10 minute polygon around that initial point. Here's the definition. I create a definition list. I add the definition to it, and then I associate it with the ISO request. So since I'm sending in an ISO request to the route command, it's going to return me an ISO response. So what I'm going to do then is, since I could have had more than one cost, I need to enumerate through the possible results that came back. So I'm going to ask for each result in the results collection. Does that result have a geometry? If it does, let's create a search within geometry search info. The geometry that I want to search within is the returned result geometry, and does it contain the geometry that it currently exists in that table? I'm going to take that search info object, pass it off to the catalog, and do a search. This is a business points data set associated with that um, default data set that I'm going to look at, or the sample data set. And we're going to send in that search info. Give me all the geometries associated or that are within that search 10 minute polygon. I'm going to get back a result set feature collection. I'm going to take the table pointer from that result set feature collection, create a feature layer around it, and pass it off to the map. So this whole bit of code deals with just doing that. So I'm going to put a breakpoint. We can take a look at the code as it runs. So let's run this. First thing we need to do is just load up a, a, a data set. So I'm going to load up this uh, King County in Washington. It's a nice little data set, sample data set you can download. And this is a uh, sample Street Pro data set. So what I want to do now is just pick a point. So let's activate our tool. I just activated by pushing button one. And I'm going to pick a point here at the bottom part of this island in the middle of the, the bay here. Pick a point and we jump right into our code. I'm going to create a connection to Invinza. Now I'm generating my isochrone request. This isochrone request, now I'm creating my definition. Remember this is the from point and I want minutes. That's the results that I want to get back. This is my first cost. Let's add it to the definition list, add it to the request. Now I send off here, is it works actually done? I'm going to package up this request, send it off to Invinsa. It's going to figure out the polygon, package up that, send it back to me. We translate it back into a map extreme object, then we're ready to go. Now I'm going to say for each one of the results in that result set, does it have a geometry? Yep. And this result geometry is a map info geometry, it's a multi polygon. So now I can create a search within geometry using the map info API. I can get my result set feature collection once I do the catalog search of this table, King County Retail, which is part of that data set I loaded. Now I can take that table pointer associated with that result set feature collection, just add it to the map, and off we go. And you'll see here, remember we clicked here? This is all the business points that I can reach within a 10 minute drive of the point that I selected right here. Obviously you can pick anywhere else, do the same thing, but basically it's the same idea. We used a custom tool just to pick a point on the map. The rest of it is just business logic. We could associate this with a desktop app or that same business logic associated with a web application as well. I want to thank you for joining us today. I hope you found the session helpful. I hope you join us again for more MapExtreme video how-to sessions.